Hey, Pete, will you stop tootling in that bathroom and get down them stairs? The shanty bang's waiting round the corner and some of the lads is getting arrested. Oh, Miss Jim, we'll never get him to Blackpool at this rate. What's your granddad searching for up there? Well, it can't be his bottle opener. He keeps that on his watch chain. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, I've got it, Jim. He'll be travelling in his kilt and his Highland regalic. What's up, Jock? Can't you find your Tommy Shunter? <laughs> I'm looking for my bullet club tie whittle. I'm not having Fred Wood passing comments on me not wearing it. Hey, Jimmy, who's Fred Wood? Now, now don't forget to remind me, Grandad, Mr. Whittle, hmm? is to bring me back four sticks of rock, two giant humbugs, a box of shrimps, and win me a prize on a stall on the pleasure beach. Hmm. Ask me what stall. What stall? Mr. Higginbottom, up a ladder. <laughs> what stall? <laughs> Oh, I'm very joculated. I'll get your old granddad to tell that joke to Fred Wood. He hates him and all. Mr. Whittle, who's Fred Wood? Mr. Wood down there, Susan, with your granddad's raincoat. Right, Mother. Hello, Mr. Whittle. Hello, Alfie. Hello, Susan. Hi, who's Fred Wood? Hi there, beautiful blue eyes. Hello, Mr. Whittle. Harry, is father still messing about upstairs? I pass, and I've shouted him till I'm hoarse. Honest, if I shout any more, I'll strain my lyrics. <laughs> hey, perhaps he's looking for that little leather bag he always takes to bowling matches. Do you know, Alfie, it just tolls four. For four balls? No, four brown ales. <laughs> he borrows the balls off his enemy, Fred Wood. Who's Fred Wood? Hey, here's Francis Mike Drake, the bowling champion. Did you find your tie, Grandad? Aye, and guess where it was, Jimmy? In your bedroom, wrapped round a bundle of old comics. Oh, hey, I'd forgotten. I was going to sell that bundle to my Paul Ozzy. Including my bowling club tie. Certainly not, Grandad. I wasn't going to sell that. I was chucking that in for nothing. <laughs> Here, Father. Drink this. Oh, it's my head. What is it? A couple of tablets. One for your stomach and one for your hangover. Go on. Drink it up while it's fizzing. Yes, and I'll hold your nose, Grandad. What for? To stop the bubbles going up it. That'll do. Mr. Whittle, what's the matter with him? Is he ill? Well, sort of, Jim, but it's nothing medicinal or surgical. Uh, to pull it in an eggshell, Jim, it's the hair of the dog that bit him. You mean he's got distemper? <laughs> well, no, Jim, it's not distemper. It's, it's just bad temper. <laughs> Whittle! <laughs> Would you mind keeping your voice down? Oh, oh, oh my head. Oh, sorry, please, uh, I won't do it again. As they say on the continent, I'll talk to your sotty vocky. <laughs> what was he up to in Blackpool last night, Harry? You were with him, weren't you? Well, for some of the time, yes, Pat. You see, uh, what happened was... Mr. Whittle told me, ma'am. My granddad nearly won the bowling match. His pal Tommy Twig won. So at night, in the pub, my granddad started celebrating. Even got up and sang a song. Will you stop your tickling, Joe? Shut up! <laughs> Oh, my head. Uh, sorry, Grandad. Perhaps he should have an ice bag on his head, man. I haven't got an ice bag. Well, stick his head in the fridge. If I get my hands on that boy, I'll... I'll, I'll, I'll... Look, 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 Father. I've got to go out shopping. Just tell me what happened last night. Well, Pete missed the bus back. That's what happened. Right, Pete? Uh, just the trouble I can't remember. Well... You must have missed the bus. I don't remember, Pat. I wasn't well. You arrived home at two in the morning in a taxi from Preston on your own. A taxi from Preston? You're right, Grandad. You weren't well. <laughs> Neither will you be in a minute. How do you know this, Pat? Because the noise woke me up. You paid the taxi driver and wished him a safe journey back to Preston. That's right, Grandad. Just have to prop you up against the front door. Hey, but Pete, you couldn't afford a taxi. When I last seen you in Blackpool just before closing time, you were skint. You had no money for the drinks you'd ordered. Hey, remember, you borrowed 50 new pence off me. I don't remember borrowing that. Quick, Mr. Whittle, make it a pound. <laughs> you be quiet. 
tired. Uh, you be quiet. Why didn't the bus wait for him, Harry? Oh, we did that for nearly an hour at the coach park, and then the driver wouldn't wait no longer, so we set off back. Father, what happened? Were you lost or something? I tell you, I can't remember, Pat. I remember the bowling match, the meal, then somebody buying me a pint. And after that, my mind's a blank and I'm very worried. Yes, you think she might have bought them one back. <laughs> I shall tell you again. Will you look at him, Harry? What a wonderful advert for the evils of drink. Oh, I think there's more to it than that, Pat. I only found out on the bus coming back. Fred Wood had been tampering with Pete Spear, slipping him a Mickey Finnegan. What? Who told you that? I also called Pal Higginbottom. He watched Fred Wood do it in the boozer. Them last three pints you had was laced up with a double gin. What? No wonder you couldn't remember anything, Father. Well, this explains it, Harry. Oh, you're right, Pat. It'd be like losing your memory and having magnesium. <laughs> and now, we'll never know now where he went after closing time. Well, after he drunk all those pints, he, mu he must have gone to the... Uh, yes, yes, Jim. <laughs> Yes, but after that, what I don't understand is that taxi from Preston to Manchester. Where did you get the money for it, Pete? Look, I don't know. I had no money. I still haven't. Here's my jacket. I'll turn the pockets out and show you. Look. Now, uh, look. Wait a minute. What's this? Hey, let me see. A fiver. A one, two, three, four, five one pound notes. Nine pounds. Ten pounds. Give it here. <laughs> Hey, look, Pete, the jokes are jokes. The stop signs are bamboozlers. Where do you get this cash? For the last time, I don't know. I cannot remember. Now, come on, Pete. Try to remember. Who lent you the lolly? I mean, we know it wasn't Fred Wood, your archie enemy. So think, Pete. Think. Where did you get it? You well, Susan, that that's what your Jimmy told me. Well, I hope he told it to you better than you're telling it to me. Yeah, listen, I'll start again. Y your granddad was ill last night because Mickey Finn gave him a Fred Wood in his beard. <laughs> but, um, the, the other way around. Y your Jimmy was right when he said he was his enemy because my dad knows him. God knows Jimmy. Well, he does. Everybody knows Jimmy. Yeah, but perhaps Fred Wood doesn't, but he knows Mr. Sinclair. Yeah, no, not my dad, although he does. Fred, 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 Fred Wood knows every... Well, what's the time? Oh, time, you shut up. Oh, it's me oh, granddad. It's all for nothing. All right, all right, that'll do now. Susan, have you seen my watch anywhere? Your watch? No, I haven't seen it, Grandad. Well, somebody must have seen it. Have you seen my watch, Alfie? Oh, yes, many a time. Not when I'm wearing it, young lady. <laughs> Susan, did you know if you hold it next to your ear, you can hear it ticking? Oh, Grandad's watch? No, Alfie's head. <laughs> I'll bump you in a minute. My head, keep your voice down. I'm out of sorry, Mr. Sinclair. I'll you in a minute. <laughs> Not you, Mr. Sinclair. Well, was it your presentation watch? Eh? Aye. The one I got in the Merchant Navy for winning the ship's junior swimming competition. Got an inscription on the back. HMS Spitfire and the date. August the 10th. 1492. <laughs> That's enough of that. I cannot find it, Alfie. I've either lost it or had it pinched. Well, why do you should report it to the police? Because they don't have the same trouble. They are one minute gone the next. No, not me, Dad. Be, 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 be. It, it was stolen, but the police got it back. His watch? No, his wheelbarrow. <laughs> Did his wheelbarrow keep good time? Oh, yes, it never lost more than a minute. But it's sure all. <laughs> well, I looked everywhere upstairs, Father. I can't find it. Hey, Mum, Alfie was just telling us a funny story. It's not a funny story. The way he tells them, they're always funny stories. <laughs> no, I, I was saying that my dad reported it to the police because it had been stolen. His wheelbarrow, and they got it back from next door where I'd lent it to him without telling him. The, the, the sergeant said he'd write it, he'd write it in the duty book so the night shift would have a good laugh as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, but, uh, uh, perhaps you should go to the police station, Father, about your wheelbarrow. A watch, I mean. <laughs> yes, Grandad, I'll go with you. I haven't been to the police station since that time I was on Alfie's bike and he ran over the policeman's foot. What happened? The policeman asked, asked to see his license and insurance 
and Alfie said they were in his wallet on the piano at home. And when the policeman told, told Alfie to bring it to the station, Alfie said, uh, uh, Could I borrow a policeman? It, it, it's a very big piano. <laughs> I know how busy the police are, Constable, but my sister is very worried when she insists I come along to the police station to report it. Well, that's quite all right, sir. We're here to help. Now, what exactly is the trouble, Mr. Brocklebank, you said? Oh, yes, Humphrey Brocklebank. Right. <clears throat> well, Juliet went out last night and she hasn't returned. And, of course, my sister imagines she's been in an accident or even that somebody might have taken her away. Yes, I can understand your sister being worried, sir. Has she ever stayed out all night before? Juliet, I mean. No, 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 no. No, she's always back by 10.30. That's our bedtime, you know. I see. <laughs> How old is Juliet, sir? Uh, nearly five. Five years old, and she stays out till 10.30 at night? And she's been missing since last night, and you're only just reporting it at half past two in the afternoon? Really, sir? I is Juliet your daughter or your sister's? Daughter? Juliet's our cat. <laughs> hey, Grandad, look who's been pinched, Mr. Brocklebank. So you've caught him at last, Constable. Bother Boots Brocklebank, the king of the skinheads. <laughs> Don't be cheeky, Jimmy. That's enough from you, my lad. No, he was only joking, Constable. He's a friend of mine. <laughs> well, there's no accounting for taste. <laughs> Master James Cliller and I have met before, haven't we? Oh, we have that, Mr. Peabody. Hello, Mr. Sinclair. Hello there, Humphrey. I've helped Mr. Peabody with some of his cases, haven't I, Mr. Peabody? Oh, yes. And if you hadn't, I might have been a sergeant today. <laughs> now, look, Constable, I'm his grandfather. If he's done anything wrong, I'd like to know about it. Oh, that's the trouble. I can't prove he has done anything wrong. He just looks innocent and says he was only trying to help. Like a month ago, when he stopped me in Radcliffe Road and said there were a gang of fellas near the town hall with guns. I radioed headquarters and ran round the corner, and there they were. A platoon of soldiers on parade. <laughs> well, Ozzy told me. I didn't know. I will just keep what Ozzy tells you to yourself in future. Excuse me, Constable, but I want to report a missing watch. I don't know whether I've lost it or it's been stolen. Well, I'm uh, busy with this gentleman at the moment, sir. If you'd like to go through that door there, sir, someone else will take down the particulars for you. Oh, right. Thank you. Uh, Jimmy, you wait here for me. Right, Grandad. I'll see if I can help Mr. Brocklebank. Now then, sir, you've come here to report a missing cat named Julia. Uh, yes, she's my sister. And she's five years old. Your sister's five? <laughs> No, James, the cat. Juliet, you know her. Oh, dear. What colour is she? Juliet's black. His sister's pink. <laughs> Look, so why don't you go out and play on the roof? I will if you'll lend me a magnifying glass. Magnifying glass? Yes, yeah, so I can see if you've got a slate loose. <laughs> You're a cheeky young devil. Excuse me a minute, sir. That's all right. I'm in no hurry. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> Hello, King's Road Police Station. Oh, yes, Inspector. No, Sergeant's not here at the moment. This is PC Peabody speaking. Yes, sir. Oh, I see, sir. Well, I'll take the message down, sir. Right, sir. Mr. Brockerbank, did you hear about me granddad getting stoned last night? James, what an expression. You mean he was a little uh, under the weather? <laughs> From the look of him this morning, he'd been under a thunderstorm. <laughs> he doesn't remember anything that happened. The others left him at Blackpool and he came home from Preston in a taxi. Drinking's daft, isn't it? It certainly is, James. He went to Blackpool and spent more than five pounds just to get a headache. If he'd stayed at home, for a ten new pence, I'd have hit him with a mallet. <laughs> right, sir, I've got that down. Check it. Oh, all right, sir. <clears throat> the victim of the assault was Mr. John Frobisher, 148 Wellington Road, Oldham, travelling by car from Blackpool last night, and he gave a lift to a Scotsman. Hey! Hear that, Mr. Brocklebank? A row developed over some remark Mr. Frobisher made about Scotland, 
And just near Preston, they pulled into a lay-by and the Scotsman assaulted Mr. Frobisher, injuring his mouth and nose and rendering him unconscious. Oh, heck! Mr. Brocklebank is talking about me granddad. Uh, what do you mean, Jeff? When Mr. Frobisher came round, he discovered he had been robbed of 15 pounds. Oh, no! That's where he got the money. James, what are you insinuating? Go and get your car started for a quick getaway. I'll go and drag me granddad out before Peabody remembers his scotch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's right, sir. And we have no idea where the Scotsman went from Preston. Some of us have. <laughs> the silly old scotch. Granddad. James, I don't understand what you are talking about. Sit down, Grandad, and drink your tea. You've had a shock. I've not had a shock. It's ridiculous. I can't believe it. Me rob someone and assault him. I just can't believe it. I don't believe it. Neither do I, Mr. Sinclair. You are incapable of such violence. You didn't think that when you broke the pane of glass in his greenhouse, even your shoes went white. <laughs> My greenhouse? Yeah, well, well, you, you were out at the time, Mr. Sinclair, and I'd replaced the glass by the time you came back, so I forgot to mention it. Yeah, while he was bent down, I came up behind him and said, Oh, hi! <laughs> he nearly swallowed the putty knife. <laughs> Uh, look, we're, we're talking about someone assaulting and robbing. And I don't believe that your grandfather could do such a thing. I mean, even if he was stoned. Yeah, and uh, the, the weather, I mean. It's all just a coincidence. <laughs> Aye. That's what it is. It's just a coincidence. You don't know how you got from Blackpool to Preston. Mr. Frobisher gave a Scotsman a lift from Blackpool to Preston. You had no money, but you got a taxi from Preston... And found ten pounds in your pocket as well. A Scotsman took fifteen pounds off Mr. Frobisher. You lose your temper when anybody calls Scotland. Mr. Frobisher calls Scotland and the Scotsman lost his temper. I can just hear the judge. The prisoner is sentenced to five years for committing the coincidence. <laughs> Oh, that's all very much, Jim. Is your granddad in? He's upstairs. He's been having his nap. Uh. But he must be awake by now, because the windows have stopped rattling. <laughs> Does he snore a bit, then? A bit. One Saturday afternoon, a fella came and said he couldn't do his work for me granddad snoring. <laughs> what was the fella doing? Working a road drill. <laughs> anyway, come in and wait for him. Come in the living room and live. Oh, uh, hello, Whittle. How are you? Oh, hello there, Humphrey. I didn't know you were here. Uh, I'm not protruding, am I? Uh, no, 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 not at all. I, uh, <clears throat> I called to see Mrs. Clitheroe, but she's out shopping, and so James and I were having a game of happy families. And in this house, that's a laugh. <laughs> happy families? I'd have thought you'd go in for them more sophisticated games, Hump. You know, uh, bridge and back of that and chamois de fire. <laughs> Uh, no, no, I'm, uh, I'm not a gambling man, Whittle. <laughs> well, what about the church fate at Easter? You were doing your nut on that hoopla stall. <laughs> oh, James, that's not a gamble. <laughs> no, it's a certainty you're going to lose. The prizes were too big for the hoops. Who is a crafty curate, that one? Oh, James, really, he's a crafty curate. <laughs> oh, you've noticed him as well, have you? <laughs> Ah, I thought it was you, Harry. How are you? Hello, Humphrey. Hello, Pete. Hello, Mr. Sinclair. Uh, I just got around to remind you about tonight, Pete. The hot pot supper at the Rosen Crown. I hope you're in good voice. I'm looking forward to hearing one of them Scotch airies of yours. You know, uh, it's a broad back moonlit neck to nook. <laughs> yes, that's a good one. Mine's I like any lorry. How does it go? You push it. <laughs> All right, funny boy. I don't think I'll be going to the pot-butt supper, Harry. Oh, but Pete, you haven't been in the Rosen Crown for a week. The barmaid's destructed with herself. I mean, she, she thinks you've gone off her. She's even changed the toothpaste. <laughs> and she's using that soap that stops people whispering in your lug. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, oh, Whittle, you are a wag. It's not him, it's his trousers. Look, Harry, I don't want to drink. I haven't been out of the house since last Saturday. That's right. Not since we went to the police station and heard about me granddad robbing that fella. Oh, James, please, you mustn't say that. No. He's right, Humphrey. I'm a thief. And a brutal one as well. Oh, now, now, Mr. Sinclair, you didn't know what you were doing. That's right, Pete. He was under the affluence. <laughs> Non-compost menthol, as they say. After all, Mr. Sinclair, you did send the 15 pounds to the police anonymously to return to the man. I thanks to you lending me the fiver, Humphrey. No, no, that's nothing. But it's preying on my mind. I've been awake every night. Every night this week. Oh, now, look, Pete, you've done everything you can. You've sent the money back. You've made respiration. <laughs> can I come in? The, the back door was open, so I just walked in. Jab on the wall, and if it was shut. Well, well, I couldn't if it was, but it wasn't, so I did. Can I? Quiet, everybody. I think I've just heard the first cuckoo. <laughs> now, don't be cheeky, Jimmy. You're welcome, Alfie. Uh, sit you doing? Yeah, thanks, Mr. Sinclair, but I can't. I, I, I've come to use your phone. No, no, I've come to use it. I, I wasn't going to when I came, but Susan's not here. You what? I mean, you can't phone Susan. She's out shopping with her mother and they haven't a phone. I mean, with them in the shops. <laughs> well, the shop would have one if we knew where they were. But we don't know. <laughs> oh, you can't phone her. I don't know what Alfie's got, Grandad, but you've caught it. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I want to phone home if I can, because I should be there now. Yeah, but I thought I had to be here, but Susan's not here. But so I remembered I wasn't supposed to be here now. I was supposed to be at home now and here later, so can I? <laughs> can you what? Oh, phone. Yes, yeah, oh, phone, please. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Sinclair. Yeah, I'll tell me, ma'am. Yeah, but I, I'm, 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 I'm not there. Yeah, but I'm here. Well, your body is. I don't know where you left your brain. <laughs> James, James, you are naughty to pour out, Fred. He just doesn't think before he speaks. Did you check that answer, Mr. Sinclair? Aye, if you will, Alfie. If it's the zoo, ask him if your cage is empty. <laughs> Hello, Alfie. Hello, Mr. Cleddero. You better Susan, I can't talk. But, but, but I can on the phone, but not, not to you. We understand, Alfie. Come on, Susan. I'll see you inside, Alfie. Inside the nut house. <laughs> oh, hello, everyone. Oh, we've got a full house, Susan. Oh, yes. Are we having a party or something? Yes, a fancy dress party. Why don't you put a mask on and come as a human being? <laughs> That's enough of that, my lad. Oh, let the infant have his little joke, Grandad. It saves us having to buy him a rattle. You don't need a rattle. You can use Alfie's head. <laughs> that will do. Yeah, the phone call was for you. Yeah, hello, Mr. Clitter or Susan. Yeah, I didn't mean you. Well, hello, I did, but not on the phone. I meant you, Grandad. M Mr. Sinclair, well, will you go straight away? Go? Go where? With Alfie's going down. That's right. <laughs> oh, shut up. To, to the police station, they want you. Y you have to go at once. Oh, so it's happened at last. Well, I'll be glad to get it off my chest and have a bit of peace of mind. Now, don't you despair, Mr. Sinclair. I will contact my solicitor at once and bring him to the police station. What are you talking about? Well, I've kept it from you, Pat, to stop you worrying, but now you'll just have to know. You wondered where I got the money from on Saturday night. Well, I stole it. I got a lift from a fellow in black. Well, Constable... I'm here, so let's get it over with. Uh, just a minute, sir. Who are you? Peter Sinclair. You sent for me about the Blackpool business. Father, don't admit anything. Oh, of course. I remember you now. That's right. I phoned your house and spoke to some stupid... Uh, someone took a message. <laughs> That's right. It was Alfie, the stupid one. The one you spoke to. Jimmy, we told you not to come. He's my granddad, our man. And he's in trouble, so I've come to help. In that case, we're all in trouble. <laughs> all right, Jimmy. But just be quiet and keep out of it or I'll deal with you later. How much later? About five years? Well, the quicker we get this settled, the sooner we can send that love of yours home. Well, I'm ready to cooperate and take what's coming. You can't remember something? 
You can't confess to it. Oh, he hasn't confessed. He said he didn't pinch your watch. A watch? Oh, this fella tried to sell your watch to a shop in Blackpool, and the jeweller saw it was on the list of stolen articles we issued. Well, it was just missing, really, at that time. But I thought you'd brought me here because you'd... He you'd be... found his watch. That's what he thought, didn't he, ma'am? Uh, yes. Well, that is why I brought him here. That is why he brought you, Grandad, your watch. <laughs> Sometimes you have to shout, Constable. Oh. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Look, just wait, uh, uh, just wait here. I'll bring the suspect in. I, wo I won't be a minute. All right, sir, come this way, please. Uh, this is the... This is the man, Mr. Sinclair. There's no need to shout. Uh, well, I, I feel like shouting. Dragged all the way here from Blackpool just because I bought a watch of some drunken Scotsman. Now, you weren't dragged. You volunteered to help us with our inquiries, sir. Wait a minute. I seem to remember your face. That's right. I met you in Blackpool near the tower. Yeah, now, I should think you do remember. You were crying in your beer because you had no money to get home, so I bought your watch off you. Yeah, oh, good, they haven't put you away yet, Mr. Sinclair. M M Mr. Brocklebank's gone for his solicitor and he said, don't say a word. Not me, you. But I had to say, say, no, no, not to say, to them, you haven't. Till you speak to him. No, 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 Mr. Brocklebank, your solicitor. <laughs> don't let on. What are you on about? Mr. Sinclair hasn't got to tell you. D -d -d He's the Scotsman who robbed the motor. But the homie lag! <laughs> Kick your leg, Alfie. I was aiming at your mouth. Now, just a minute. Mr. Sinclair, did you sell this gentleman your watch? Aye. I remember now. I did. Ah, well, thank you for nothing. And you can keep that blooming watch here. Just give me my 15 pounds back. 15 pounds? Is that what you got, Father? Aye, that's right. 15 pounds. Hey, that's funny. That, that, that's how much you stole off Mr. Frobisher when you bashed him. D d get off my leg, Jimmy. <laughs> Mr. Frobisher, are you talking about the Scotch fellow who robbed the motorist? Yes, he is, and I want to clear that up. Well, I don't know what you mean. It's cleared up. We caught him on Sunday. Young Scotch tear away he was sleeping in a lodging house in Preston when they found him. You mean it wasn't me grandad? Hey, grandad, fancy, it wasn't you. It was just a coincidence. That's a laugh. Well, laugh now, because you won't be doing much laughing when I get you home. Grandad, don't get worked up, or we'll have to send for the doctor. I, for you, I've not slept for a week. I've been on the wagon. I've sent 15 pounds I didn't owe to someone I never met. And all because of you. You, 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 you,